Uh, here's a comment. Uh, I heard uh, I, a certain pastor say that the 144,000 are Old Testament saints. Um, well, let's let's just do the math. Um, that would suggest that only 144,000 uh, Old Testament saints uh, are going to be part of the, the kingdom. I, I find that hard to swallow. And uh, were there 144,000 virgins that um, would then somehow be resurrected or something, I, I just don't think it fits with uh, what we see in the text. I think the 144,000 are going to be young men. In fact, let's go to the text. This is in Revelation chapter 7. So Revelation chapter 7, let me share this with you on my screen so that you guys can see what I am seeing. Uh, it's always good to look at the text. I, I think it's so important. Uh, that's why at the Way Congregation, I always put the text up because I want people to see the text. You know, what, what matters is not so much what I say, uh, but what does the Bible say? What does the text say? And that is what we ought to be basing our lives on. Uh, now, what a pastor can tell you, okay, that's fine. But what the what the Bible tells you is of critical importance. Now, my uh, my computer uh, is having a little try, a little <laughs> a little tough time here sharing the screen. Let me try that again. I'll see if I can get it uh, without crashing the whole system here. All right, there we go. Okay, so we're in Revelation chapter 7, and it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea. And then it says, uh, it says, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. All right, so, well, who who are they telling this to? Well, to the four angels the four angels who are the four angels well presumably they would be the four angels in revelation chapter 9 all right so in revelation chapter 9 which we discussed last week it says then the sixth angel sounded and i heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before god saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet release the four angels who were bound at the great river euphrates and they're going to kill a third of mankind. It's not going to be a very pretty day. So those are the four angels. The, the, the difficulty of the book of Revelation is we would like to read this in a chronological order, but it's not given to us chronologically. It's given to us in the order that John saw these various visions. And these visions oversect and overlap. And uh, so it, it, it's, uh, it's a challenge to go through and say, okay, who are these characters? Where do we find them? Where are they described for the first time? And so I understand that in Revelation chapter seven, the focus is not on these four angels, but the focus is on these 144,000. Who are the 144,000? This is the, the, the essence of this vision that John is getting right here. Who are the 144,000? And then in Revelation chapter nine, he's gonna give us a vision of this, great star that falls from heaven presumably satan uh and then these uh scary locusts or manticores that come out of the earth or out of the abyss and then uh the the hundred the uh, two hundred thousand uh army uh, which again i think are all the same uh but and then of course these these four angels who are bound at the river euphrates so they're told don't harm uh, the earth, the sea, or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. All right? So don't do anything bad until we get this done. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel. All right? So that's all 12 tribes. That's important to understand. Uh, it's not just the Jews. It's not just Judah. But 12,000 were sealed from Judah. It's true. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, from Gad, Another 12,000 from Asher, etc. Right? And so, so we have that description. Then we have to go to Revelation 14. So he's getting another um, look at this, this, this group. And he says, Behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. 
And I heard the voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters. All right, so who are these? They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. So here it goes. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Okay, so there you go. Um, they're not women, okay? They're men, and uh, they are they're virgins, okay? So, uh, you know, probably a good chance that they're, they're relatively young. Uh, they're clearly not married. All right? I mean, the, there's all kinds of obvious things are going off here in this text that we ought to see. And it says, these are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to God and also to the Lamb. So, in my opinion, I, I don't see how this could be referring to Old Testament resurrected saints when um, I, it just doesn't fit. I, I don't know even how to how to put it any better. Uh, it's just not talking about uh, Old Testament saints. It's it's talking about people that will be, um, you know, in, in, in the, in the present day, whether that's today or, you know, in 10 years or 20 years, but, uh, either from now until the future, when Jesus returns, there will be this group. And I think it's exciting because we see this group that has clearly 12,000 representatives from Judah, but also 12,000 from every other tribe. And that is exciting. And what has been overlooked for centuries, is the common wealth of Israel. The fact that God is restoring both the house of Israel, also known as Ephraim, and the house of Judah. This is the prophecy that's given in Ezekiel chapter 37, the two sticks that will become one in his hand again. All right, so uh, I'm going to take my, uh, my uh, improvised stick here. So we have two sticks, right? We've got uh, this one is Judah, and this one is Ephraim, or the house of Israel. And God's going to put them back together so that they become one stick in his hand, not to be two sticks again. That prophecy was given in the book of Ezekiel. It was made possible by the work on the cross, the blood of Jesus, so that he reconciled all things together in heaven and on earth. He reconciled the, the two different houses that they should come back together and be one and the middle wall of separation would be taken down and they would become one and never be two nations again in his hand. Now, somehow uh, that very simple uh, reality has been hidden from us. Uh, I think most of us have not seen that. Uh, I only saw it very recently within the last five years and it hit me like a ton of bricks and a, uh, I've had Doug Krieger on here, a good friend of mine, and the same thing is happening to him. He's like, how did we miss this, right? And so this is a huge, huge part of what's happening. So when we think about the 144,000, uh, it should not surprise us that they are very literally of these different tribes. Now, I personally cannot identify them because I'm not God. I don't know who's who. But it's exciting to realize that God knows who everybody is and he knows where the dna is and what the markers are and all that different stuff and so he'll figure it out just fine but there will be representatives twelve thousand from every tribe and that's going to be the first fruits and then when of course jesus comes back he gets the whole kingdom going and and it's going to be a great time so uh good question uh i i don't think that it's old testament saints <laughs> so